Hey everybody, it's Mac from Rev Robotics. We're here today to talk about our Ultra Planetary Gearbox system. As you all have been aware, we have had a tried and true singular gear ratio options available in Spur and also Planetary for the last couple of years being used in the competition and in the classroom. Now with the Ultra Planetary Gearbox system, you're able to adjust dynamically on the fly for prototyping and also for your final, final robot, giving you a lot more flexibility in design choices. Today we're going to go over what comes in the Ultra Planetary kit and also highlighting some of the features of the Ultra Planetary Gearbox system as well as going through and building a three-stage gearbox. So now let's talk about the kit features. We have a mounting plate that mounts directly to the bare motor with a pinion pre-pressed on it. We have three individual cartridges coming in a 5 to 1, 4 to 1, and 3 to 1 nominal gear ratio. Each cartridge is labeled and it has an input as well as its output for uh, each piece. The cartridges are pre-assembled and pre-lubricated, so there is no additional work that is needed. Lastly, we have our output. The output still has the same type of an input mounting, as well as having an, a female output mounting. This allows you to choose any shaft length to be able to place in and being able to control how long the output shaft is going to be. Another really cool feature of the Alter Planetary Gearbox system is that you're able to directly face mount using the motion pattern onto the output. So you can take any of our standard gears, sprockets, or wheels and directly mount them to your gearbox, making it really, really easy to interface to other motion profile products. One of the other things that comes with the kit is a HD hex motor with a pinion already pre-pressed on, allowing you to easily get up and running and ready to go uh, with your machine. Also, the Ultra Planetary Gearbox kit comes with a hardware pack, allowing you to use a zero cartridge, one cartridge, two cartridge, or three cartridge configuration, allowing for you to choose the gear ratio that best fits the application that you're using. Now it's time to end up building your gearbox stack. What you're going to want to do is take your first cartridge, making sure that it is the highest gear ratio in your gearbox stack. So making sure that you have either a five to one, if it's the five to one, or the four to one, if that is the highest one. Um, available. Within a default kit, you get a singular 5 to 1, 4 to 1, and 3 to 1, so we're choosing the 5 to 1 to put on the bottom. You're going to want to then take your 4 to 1 cartridge, basically hold the output, and then rock it on top of your 5 to 1. You're then going to want to repeat that process with your next cartridge, the 3 to 1, and snap those into place. Once this is finished, you're going to want to take your bare motor now with the mounting plate on it, and basically trying to do the same thing, holding your output and rocking this around to get that to go into place. Last thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your output stage and follow the same basic procedure. This time it is typically easier actually for you to physically rotate the output to be able to get it to match on. Once that's done, you're going to want to grab your hardware and start feeding your hardware in to its appropriate slots. You can usually load these and give it a couple of turns with your finger just to get it started and seated. And then once they're seated, you can go ahead and take your Allen key and just tighten each one of them down. Now you're going to want to make sure that these are snug to the mounting plate. Basically this is providing all the compression that is keeping the cartridges pushed together so that the inputs and outputs are meshing all the way down to the pinion that is on your motor. Now you need to choose your mounting option. There are two options that are available to you. You can either use a hex shaft of any length through the female output or you're able to directly face mount to the gearbox itself. When you're choosing to do face mounting, it's a really great option for high torque applications or high speed applications. The output itself is dual ball bearing supported, so you don't need any additional support from a shaft onto a shaft or another thing that allows you to basically cantilever and go without with impunity. To be able to get a wheel, sprocket, or gear mounted onto the output, it's fairly straightforward. We're going to use one of our metal sprockets along with some of the hardware. Just want to go ahead and 
feed this in along the motion pattern. Usually taking one of these and having it pre-fed in is helpful to help get it started. Then you clock the sprocket back over, get your second one started as well. Take a nut driver and pushing this all the way through. Once that's all the way down, you're able to drive motion with it being face mounted. Another option that you're able to have is you can choose a hex shaft of any length and being able to put it in through the female output. It's really straightforward. You're able to go ahead and take that, put that through the female output, find your set screw using the Allen key of the right size, tightening that down, and then the hex shaft is in. One of the applications where you might want to be able to face mount and also have a hex shaft driving your motion is, for example, in a drivetrain application. You can have a center wheel being driving, directly driven while these gears are running to another area. Or, for example, it could come in handy with lifts, elevators, and arms. Really, it's up to you. It allows you to be a lot more creative with your designs and being able to push the envelope a little bit. But to get a mounting plate onto here, which there are multiple options, for most of the mounting plates, you may need to end up not having something face mounted to the gearbox itself. So we're gonna go ahead and show mounting with one of our face mounting brackets. First thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to take the sprocket off. Take your face mounting bracket, put it over the top. Find the holes that you're looking to push this through. Get one started, clock the bracket so that you're able to get the other hole started as well. And once they're started, take your nut driver, and drive them down nice and tight. Now it's ready to use and put onto your robot. That's all we have today for the Ultra Planetary Gearbox. Check out the product page for the drawings that have more information available on the specifics of the different gear ratios that are available and the gear ratio combinations. If you have any other questions about using the REV system, check out our technical resources page where there are more things around the building system as a whole to be able to get you started. As always, if you run into any problems or have any questions, feel free to reach out to our support team, support at revrobotics.com, or give us a call. Good luck at the competition.